hi everybody, it's Doug. So we had in video 104 some tips for Picker's Plateau. Got some new tips for another area today, but before we go there, I did want to give you a bonus tip for Picker's Plateau. So let's say you've got a lock with a sprung core like this one, and as you're working on this one, the tension is really, really tricky for rust, less experienced pickers. Um, the problem is the spring core. Often people are fighting, trying to get the right amount of tension against the spring on the core. The secret, unlock the shackle and then pick. No spring tension at all. You're only dealing with a dead core, not fighting the spring tension. And then once you get used to it, then you can close the shackle and pick it again with the spring tension. Doesn't work for everyone, but uh, like the Abuses, it actually just reduces the tension when you open the, the shackle, but it still can help. So on to the subject of today's video, and I'll try to get through these as quickly as possible so I don't run out of steam or bore you guys. So the tips are about getting more from your same old locks. One of the things I ran into as a young picker was that uh, I, I had a limited set of locks and I picked them over and over again and eventually you learn the binding order and know exactly what's going on. And it's, it's kind of a limit. You, you can't get any further. And then to make things worse, the, uh, the Reddit for lock picking has the belt ranking and all you want to do is jump to the next belt jump to the next belt and yeah you can make it all the way up to your blue or whatever without really learning some tricks and extras on the fundamentals so here's how you can learn more without going up into the next levels of locks so first one picking backward most of us pick clockwise and uh, that's generally the quickest way to get a lock open but Pick counterclockwise because you're going to find that you get a whole different lock there. With most locks, remember that the binding order is determined by the slight offset of the pin cylinders. And uh, basically, if you pick counterclockwise, you're going to be hitting them in a totally different order. The reverse order generally, but uh, machining being what it is, it might be slightly different. Also, it will differ a little bit based on the... the uh, pinning up top with you got some spools and stuff like that up there. So that's number one, picking it backward. Number two on that same picking it backward is that you can do that even with a pack lock or American lock. You might say, how is that possible? As long as the actuator is not fighting you, you still can pick one of these counterclockwise, but very, 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 very big caution. They're not meant to go counterclockwise, so once you pick through, try not to rotate it more than, I don't know, 30 degrees. If you go too far, you can actually get bound in the uh, 90 degree position, and do not, do not, do not ever go full 180, because then the driver pins will drop into the keyway, and you're gonna have an awful mess on your hands. So, a piece of advice with this, Take the lock core out of the body. It doesn't need to be in the padlock to pick. Pull it right out, put it into a vise, pick it counterclockwise that way. Same cautions, never, never 180 it. Next one, next big tip. Take the lock and pick it upside down. That one's kind of an interesting one because you are so used to using the muscles on this side of the hand to try to push upward now you've got to push downward, all different feel. Our European friends already know about this because this is the direction that European locks are generally mounted. Uh, this is also going to help train you for situations where you can't control the position of the lock. One day you're gonna need to get an a lock open and there's just no way to pick it for right side up, as we Americans consider it, upside down will double your skills. Another one is to start at a different pin. Um, Bosnia and Bill always taught from the beginning, the videos that I watched, start at the back and work your way forward, pin six, five, four, and so on. If that's your habit, try starting at one and working your way backward. You're gonna find that sometimes 
your binding order can change just a slight bit because there might be two potential uh, bindable pins and where you would have come from the back and hit three, instead two might bind first. So pick from a different direction. Another one, try a different pick. Now, this is to prepare yourself for a case where you have limited tools. Maybe you do need to help somebody out and you grabbed what picks you could and you get there and you find that you didn't have what would have been your ideal pick. Maybe you would have gone for an offset hybrid or something like that and there's not one available. So train with the non-ideal pick. Funny thing is, sometimes by doing that, I actually got the lock open faster because my judgment said to use one pick, but counterintuitively, a totally different style, like a uh, maybe a half diamond or a snowman gets that open. Another one, restrict the keyway. By dropping a tensioner in there, this isn't going to work for every lock, but you review, you remove the ability to pick at that high angle that you could get from using the bottom of the keyway for leverage. Uh, remember, obviously, in like a Schlage lock, that's only going to bind the core. That's not going to help every time. But in many cases, that will get you a whole new perspective on that one. Now, Another one that I thought of is if you're ever trying to actually get into someone's house for your own use, remember, only pick locks you own or have permission to pick, sometimes you're going to run into a situation where there's a door jam right there. And that's going to prevent you from dropping that tensioner in right over there because the door jam is going to be in your way. Pretend there's a door jam there. How else will you attack this when there's a tight space to get to that lock? So restrict yourself and learn that way. Another one is tension. They're both, uh, these next two are about tension and they're our last two. When you're dealing with spool pins, you have two extra advantages. First of all, try easing your tension. As a younger picker, people tend to have that death grip. And once they get the uh, lock started, they're afraid to let go of tension because they don't know what's going to happen. I've found that sometimes as I'm getting into a lock, if I pulse or just slightly release the tension, I might get a pin that was overset to drop back down right into the set position. There's a whole set of what they call reverse picking skills for doing the whole lock that way. I don't have them, but I do find that sometimes when I've been fighting a lock and it's not getting anywhere, a little ease on the tension drops some of those pins back down and gives you either a second chance or it literally brings them right into the set position. Final one, practice mushroom tension. Now, I don't know if we could actually create a scenario for that one, but when you're dealing with something like an Abus lock where they have mushroom pins, that last push is always the most difficult because as you are going and reaching the end of the pin, the nature of the mushroom is to try to get you to push, push, and then bam, you've overset. What you need to do with mushroom tension is as you're pushing, slowly ease back on the tension, and then the moment the tip of the mushroom gets through, bam, tighten up that tension once again. Takes a lot of practice, but it's important, especially with closely machined locks like your Abus's, where it's very, very good tolerances, and especially when there are mushroom pins. So those are your tips for getting more out of the same old locks approach them a whole new way and it's a brand new lock. Number one, pick it backwards. Number two, pick it upside down. Number three, start at the opposite pin than normally. If you start at the back, move to the front and vice versa. Number four, try different picks. Go for a totally different pick, especially if it's counterintuitive to the keyway. Number five, restrict the keyway by dropping a tensioner in there when you can. Number six, block access as if there were a door jam or something getting in your way. Seven, ease your tension and correlative with that, try mushroom 
tensioning. So you can get used to the idea of that ease, ease, bam, slightly tap it down again. Thanks for everybody watching and tuning in. I appreciate everybody's support and I look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do take the time to subscribe. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you guys again soon.